We've uh, recently experienced floods in Auckland and uh, in the Bay of Plenty uh, with that first set of floods at the end of January and then Cyclone Gabriel went down and gave us a real sting in the tail down in uh, Napier. Uh, floods are actually, are actually our most common natural disaster and the problem is they're much harder to actually forecast not their occurrence but how much rain and where they actually strike is surprisingly hard to predict. So we get these uh, situations where uh, whole catchments are overwhelmed. Now our houses are not designed to cope with that. The, the house has drainage and a, you can design for overland flow, but once the whole catchment's failed, then the house will flood. And then you're stuck with flood restoration. And that's what I want to talk about. In typical flood restoration, you take out the contents that are affected, you strip out the floor coverings, and then you take out the kitchens and the units, or like kitchen units or bathroom units that are in the way, take off the linings that are damaged, and you let it dry out. That's the conventional process. The point I want to talk about is the problem we have now because of untreated timber and poorly treated timber. The key issue or the key message here is the need to treat it. And to treat it, uh, we use boron salts. Um, the chemical is disodium octoborate and the brand name is Proton Frame Saver. Uh, that's commonly used in leaky building remediation where we have untreated timber. In that case we coat the timber with two coats, dyed pink so you can see what, you, see what you've done. And that's all been tested by Forest Research and it's been approved by the Department of Building and Housing which is now MB. Uh, all that information is available online. The, the process is reasonably straightforward. In this case of flood restoration, the timber's wet and that's the best time to apply this particular chemical because the salt uses the water as a way of getting into the sapwood of the red outer pine. That's the key issue. So take the linings off, don't wait for dryness, get it on, two coats, and then wait and it will dry out naturally and it will treat the timber. So you've actually gone from an untreated timber to a treated timber for surprisingly little money. It costs around about $500 for the materials for an average house and my guess around about $500 to put on two coats. So for $1,000 you can buy a treated base tier frame and without that you run the risk of future problems which I'll talk about soon. A boron treatment goes back to the 1950s. It was uh, developed by the DSIR. Um, and it was developed both as an insecticide and as a um, fungicide. Now, it was given the name boric treatment. Boric didn't mean bo uh, borer, it meant uh, a boron salt, boric salts. So that was one misnomer. The product was actually very cheap to buy. It was um, very effective and it's been proven to be effective in recent tests and also it was easy to apply. They simply took some green pine, dipped it into a tank, rattled it around, took it out, put covers over it and left it for a few months while the salts worked their way into the wet timber. And we use that timber, in my living memory, we use that from through the 60s, 70s, 80s and into the early 90s. And what happened was the Building Act came along in 1991 the building code started in 1993, on 1st of January, and that required dry framing, and rightly so. So kiln-dried timber, which was around, became very popular overnight. So the problem with kiln-drying boron-treated timber was that in the kiln, you would create vapour from the heat, and that vapour would push all the boron liquid out, and so you would lose a lot of the boron treatment. So that made it you know, not as good and uh, we've tested timber and often the levels are well below what they should have been. The other interesting thing was that when untreated timber was allowed in 1995, we didn't immediately see untreated timber in the market. It was marked untreated, but what was happening, the, the mills were still dipping the timber in boron because they had it in stock and then they were kiln drying. So we didn't really see the full effects of untreated timber to about 1998. And that went on to 2004 when we returned back to treated timber. From 2004 to 2011, 
we had treated timber but we also had untreated timber and the, the untreated timber could be used in internal framing of houses and behind brick veneer because they were regarded as low that was regarded as low risk that situation went through to 2011 when the, the decision was made to treat all timber with boron salts once again so looking at the types of houses affected if you've had a building that's had a leaky building remediation then it's likely the outside framing has been treated but the inside walls won't be so that's where you worry that's where you focus your attention you may still want to put some treatment on the outside walls as well but really the inside walls are the main concern if you've got a brick veneer house then the outside framing is going to be untreated and likely the rest of the house as well so between 1993 and 2011 I think you should treat all the framing. If you've got a typical house, say weatherboard clad, then the dates probably 1993 to 2004, 2005, because the outside frame should be treated. If you're not sure, put the treatment on anyway.